Well, hello YouTube, Louie here again with um, another uh, article and another review of um, what is happening to gold and silver around the world. Um, and happy Saturday morning. I hope you're having a great weekend. If you're in America, uh, a nice three-day weekend. Uh, pardon me while I take a little sip of my coffee. All right, now on to the news. This is really interesting. Um, you may have caught this article or it may have slipped by you, but um, S&P is slashing Argentina's debt rating into junk territory. So uh, I can read you this article, but the gist of it is that Argentina is basically defaulting on uh, their IMF loans. And uh, they're not saying that uh, we won't pay them back. What they're saying is we won't pay them back when they're due which basically is a default and s p has slashed them to uh triple c minus um that money will never go back to the imf um you know when when somebody says they're going to pay you back the money and then they can't do it but i'll pay you later uh, a lot later that basically means you're not getting the money back but this does allow the imf to turn a blind eye to it and um, act like it's still good debt. Now, uh, you may say the IMF doesn't matter, and I'm going to get into uh, what's happening to gold and silver in Argentina in just a minute, and you're really going to want to see that. But just to, to show you what happens here, you know the, uh, the IMF um, is linked to all of the major countries. Uh, let me show you uh, who is paying for Argentina's default. Maybe you are. All right, here we are uh, uh, on an internal um, IMF um, uh, disclosure of who funds the IMF. In other words, who just lost all that money that Argentina defaulted on? Well, you might imagine United States is right up there in the top funding. Uh, I'm not going to get into the amounts of money, but it's hundreds of billions of dollars, okay? Hundreds of billions. 16.5% of your taxpayer money uh, just went to uh, to fund the in, in the United States to fund the Argentina uh, default. And they say it has no fiscal effect in America, but, uh, you know, they'll just print it, right? That's all they need to do is print money from nothing. Uh, I'm not sure if United Kingdom actually pays uh, that or they, they print the money through quantitative easing. Um, but 4% of your money in the United Kingdom has, uh, uh, you have funded 4% of the IMF in the United Kingdom. Um, and it pretty much goes according, uh, according to the size of your economy. So the bigger economies, uh, Germany, France, um, Let's see, Spain, 1.2% funding. Um, they put every country in here, so it's hard to find the biggest ones uh, right off the bat. Um, but you can probably guess what they are. Um, one second. One second. Uh, one second. Some countries fund and borrow simultaneously. And, of course, you know, the biggest borrowers uh, are going to be countries like uh, Greece for example. Uh, Three percent of the IMF is funded from Italy, if we have any Italian viewers. Uh, nearly three percent from India. Uh, again, just looking for the larger pieces. Four percent from France, and so on. Um, Egypt is another failing economy that uh, the IMS, IMF is funding with uh, high inflation. These economies all have high inflation. I wanted to get to Germany. Uh, somehow I missed it. Hold on. And Germany is a, a very um, big economy, so uh, F, G. Uh, Germany, 5.5% five, five is funded from uh, Germany, which I think Germany might be going into recession, if I recall correctly. But so you can see uh, many of uh, you watching right now. Um, well, I know I have a lot of Australian viewers. Let's go to Australia. How much, uh, you know, you've got your own issues in Australia, but you fund, you just funded uh, the bailout of to a tune of 1.3% of the total of the Argentina um, non-default default. 
All right, so here is the article again about the S&P slashing the uh, ratings of Argentina. And I am just, I'm not going to read it to you, but um, you can certainly Google um, uh, S&P slashes Argentina debt. And you will see the all the details. Uh, basically, uh, Argentina is having a shift to a more uh, left-wing uh, government. And um, therefore, it uh, looks like they are going to repeat history uh, with their uh, currency, which has had bout, bouts of hyperinflation in the past. Um, well, I'm not positive it's hyperinflation. That, that's a tough word to define. So um, excessive inflation. So let's go over and see finally now what is going on with gold in Argentina. Okay, here we are. Are you surprised that uh, an ounce of gold cost 90,000 pesos in Argentina? Well, you know, you shouldn't be when you look at the way that they're running their government and the way that they're managing their debt. Because only a couple of months ago, gold cost 60,000 pesos. Okay? And you say silver follows gold. Well, in this example, silver um, costs 1,092 pesos today. But a month or two ago, it only cost... Um, 600 pesos. So what you see here is um, the currency falling apart. Uh, let's take a long-term view of gold um, priced in Argentino in Argentine pesos um, for uh, 15 years. Okay, there is the gold chart and there you see what happens uh, as countries move into uh, mismanaging their finances and overspending and uh, defaulting on debt and their currency over and over again. Um, so the question here is Argentina, uh, what is it about one peso to the dollar or something like that? Um, I'm sorry, um, uh, one tenth of a peso to the dollar or one hundredth of a peso to the dollar. I don't recall offhand. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, I went and got that fact. Uh, as I speak, uh, it takes 59 pesos to buy one dollar. So you, you can see what's going on there. And a couple of months ago, it would have been 40 or something like that. And a couple of years ago, it would have been 20. Um, but do you see the rapid loss of purchasing power of the Argentine uh, peso? And what what is keeping them even? And now, if you just hold pesos... Um, uh, you know, the cost of groceries and the cost of rent and utilities and so forth has just um, gone up significantly, right? But um, if you held gold, you have kept your purchasing power. And I, I suspect that uh, gold is going up as we speak as well around the world, um, uh, you know, and in the United States and priced in U.S. dollars that um, that has a... a, a a um, exponential effect over here in Argentina but you know it is the way that Argentine citizens could have protected themselves so if you were sitting here a few months ago um, with uh, Argentine uh, with gold at uh, 50,000 pesos um, and you had a tenth of an ounce or whatever it is that you could afford um, today that money is worth much more, the 90,000 peso number, and you could take that gold and you could trade it for goods and services. Um, and I imagine you could get the same or more goods or services than you could in the past. But if you're holding pesos in the bank, um, forget about it. You've just lost control. So th this is my point on these currency um, devaluations. Um, a, it's interesting to know that uh, we in the larger producing countries are funding the IMF. Uh, B, it's interesting to know that uh, they are allowing their um, the, 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 the countries that have taken loans to default without calling them defaults. Um, and of course, we print more money here in the U.S. anyway to pay for that. And then uh, you can see what the effect is in the country that uh, is undergoing the, uh, the move. Um, the other thing I think to take away is part of this move has occurred due to a loss in confidence 
as the government moves to the left. So we haven't even begun to experience in the United States um, and possibly in other large countries as well, more substantial moves to the left in politics, which will cause a further deterioration in confidence in the soundness of our currency. Not that uh, conservatives are that much more trustworthy when it comes to our conservative to our currency, perhaps not at all. Um, but uh, that also has a magnifying effect when the citizens lose uh, confidence in the currency. But here you are. In our, if you're in Argentina, uh, please go out and buy some gold today or some silver. Please do that for yourself because if I were to put this chart, okay, I got to do this just for the, just for, um, uh, just to show you what will happen next to Argentina. Okay, here we are, guys, in the end game, right? This is the Venezuelan Bolivar. And what you see here is the price of gold. Um, and I don't know if the Bolivar has any value left at all. Um, I know they keep uh, adding zeros to the money and so forth, and I'm not going to do that story at the moment. But here is the end game of really all fiat currencies over time. Just takes some of us longer to get here. So before the Bolivar, I guess, became worthless, uh, it was for a time worth three zero 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 three trillion dollars an ounce of gold was worth three trillion venezuelan bolivars an ounce of silver was worth three point eight million bolivars okay this is a currency that people were trading for goods and services and chickens and cows and rent and so forth and um um, believe me, the citizens of Venezuela wish they had a little silver and a little gold and probably some, you know, some food stockpiled as well. So that is, that is end game, right? That's it. That's where this is headed. This is going to be the chart of, um, Argentina. This is going to be the chart of, um, Greece. Uh, this is going to be, you know, who knows, you, you can insert your own country here and you see who pays for it. The larger countries with the larger GDP that participate in the IMF are paying for some of this with the lost. I don't know how much money the IMF loaned Venezuela or how much they will loan them. Um, but um, this all comes home to roost and it, then it weakens our currencies because we are bailing out the weaker countries. So let's move on just really quickly to uh, the last, um, uh, let's see, I'm at 14 minutes. Um, I just quickly want to review the euro. Okay, one second. All right, so here we are in euros. Um, a uh, ounce of gold in uh, euros is 1,382 at the moment. Um, uh, pretty close to one to one uh, exchange rate. The ounce of silver is about uh, 1670. Let's take a look at the long term for the euro. And I do believe the euro is going to have more problems. Here's a five year chart. Um, this just shows you uh, go gold is clearly making its move. Uh, as I was saying, gold uh, um, ha is clearly making its move in the euro. And as you can see from a uh, uh, breakout above 1200 up to 1400 and silver has yet to make its breakout move, but silver will track gold eventually. And as you saw in some other countries that um, um, when the uh, chickens come home to roost, so to say, um, gold and silver both go up. So I think silver is uh, the better buy at the moment in euros. But um, if I were uh, in a European, uh, a euro based economy, um, I'd be looking very hard. And this is not financial advice, but if I, if I were there, I'd be looking very hard at converting more of my, um, my, my fiat into hard assets. And you pick the hard asset of your choice, but it's easy enough to go buy an ounce of gold or two or ten. Um, and don't forget about silver because it is, uh, looks to be undervalued in relation to gold. I think the euro is going to have problems with more defaults, uh, uh, among its, uh, its member countries and, uh, with Great Britain exiting, which I think will happen. Um, 
So uh, I, I don't see good times ahead for the euro. And this move here, if you felt the gold was expensive at 1,400 euros, well, I mean, I think it's just getting started. I really do. I really do. I think I think you could see this be at 2,800 a year from now. Um, or maybe it'll just be a slow grind upward. Let's take a look at the longer chart of the euro. That's 15-year chart of the euro. Oh, look at that. So, um, so uh, this is not an all-time breakout. Uh, looks like around 2011, 12, let's see, 12. Between 2012 and 2013, um, uh, we had a previous crisis of some kind. Um, oh, well, that was the Great Recession. Okay, so we know when re when recessions hit, uh, that's going to be hard. That was hard on the euro before, and gold inflated. That's when gold was uh, nearly 2,000 an ounce um, in uh, the United States. Uh, here we are with gold only at about 1550 in the United States, and we have um, reached uh, um, the same level. Um, this is telling. I mean, this is really very telling that um, back here, the, our, goal, our gold uh, was around 2000 and uh, in euros, uh, it only got to 1400 Now our gold in the United States is 15-something, and we're right back to the 1400 euro top. So um, I think that lends more evidence to uh, to us breaking through 1,400 euros and going much higher um, as the euro weakens. Let's see what silver looks like on a 15-year uh, chart. Oh, look at that. Silver just getting going. Just getting going. And I know some of, uh, you know, some of your countries tax silver uh, considerably. But uh, look at gold and look at silver. Gosh. What a tremendous opportunity in euros, and it hasn't even it hasn't even had an intermediate breakout over 2017. Um, okay, well, um, I was trying to keep this to 15 minutes. I thoroughly failed, but please uh, uh, let me know your thoughts about um, Argentina and the euro, and what you're doing to protect yourself, or whether uh, you. Um, you feel like this is going to blow over and uh, perhaps um, these metals will go back down because they certainly could. Um, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I think there's opportunity uh, in, uh, in gold and silver. Okay, talk to you guys later. And again, if you like these videos, please um, consider um, um, subscribing. Thanks, everybody. Louie out.